Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending where you are in the world. Welcome to uh, Cichlids and Coffee, and I'm very happy you're here, and uh, let's go ahead and get underway. I see, uh, I see you folks started some of the chat before me, and that's always a good thing. Uh, Ed? Ed, if I haven't sent you some stickers already, uh, send me your, your address, your mailing address. Looks like you were the first on the chat. I'm still digging for stickers, but I am keeping track of the first arrivals at each of the chats, and so I will send you something. Send me your address to ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com, and thank you for being the early bird. Hello, Doug M. Hello, T-Bone Fish Fishies. Good day to you, too, as well. Elijah Davis, good morning to you. Hey, Chevy Fish, good to see you. And we have Geek Boy and Scott Morin and Cat Sailor. Hello, Cat Sailor. And uh, Josh Miller, hello, Josh. And do you prefer Joshua? Some people like their whole name. My son-in-law is Michael. You can't call him Mike, you got to call him Michael. And uh, hey, Leo. And yes, I, you're going to love those Plastidochromus. They are... Some of my favorite fish, especially the Jala Reefs, and probably a close second is the, um, well, probably the, the Johnsonai, the, the uh, Plastidochromus Johnsonai, gorgeous fish, and uh, get a hold of some of those if you can, and uh, all the Plastidochromus are just gorgeous fish. You can't really go wrong with them. And hey, Andy, Texas Fish Room is here. And uh, Evan, Rifkind, hello to you too as well. And I will get into some of your comments and questions as we go along. And it looks like we have about 45 folks on now. Share that link. Let's go ahead and, uh, and get that up to uh, in that 100, 200 range and uh, get rocking and rolling. Hey, Candy, glad you're here. And uh, Candy is the... Uh, master moderator on YouTube. And uh, thank you so much for your help, Candy. Always appreciated. So um, let's go ahead and uh, officially start this live stream with the uh, dropping logo that was made by Phil Griffiths over in Great Britain. All right, if you're new, and this is my usual message, uh, be sure to hit that, uh, that subscribe and the bell and the thumbs up or down. If you didn't like it, hit down. <laughs> if you're new, consider subscribing. It tells, uh, and hitting that bell, tells YouTube you like the content of the channel and they'll recommend the channel to other YouTubers. So uh, always good. And... Uh, for those of you who are interested in supporting the channel, you can do it through super chatting during the live stream. And you can also visit the amazon.com link. And uh, that helps the channel when you use that link to get to Amazon. And also, uh, if you acquire stuff like this, sweatshirts and t-shirts and, and coffee cups from the channel. And uh, these things also support the channel as well. If you go to the Teespring store, use live stream for a 10% uh, discount at checkout for a bunch of good stuff. So um, let's see here. Hey, Denny, another one of my moderators is here. And uh, that's Dennis Rudell from Chicago, who is considering relocating down south, possibly to Tennessee. And I hope, I hope that happens, Denny. You're going to love it down here. I certainly do, and it's uh, just a great place to live, good quality of life, very affordable. Cost of living is, uh, is probably 30 to 50% less than where we were in Southern California. So um, let's get into today's topic right off, the, uh, right off the bat. I want to talk with you about the future of the, uh, the, future of the fish room and the direction that things are going in. It, it, it's, it's really exciting what, what's happening. 
and I don't know why it's happening exactly. Um, I haven't actually intentionally uh, reached out or made any kind of, of pleas or, or requests, but I'm having uh, folks step up and, and offer to, to, to um, participate in the, in the new fish room in ways that, that are uh, just real exciting and, and make me, they just make me really happy that people are wanting to take part of this, of this project that I've been involved in. And uh, the, uh, the list, it's a pretty long list, but, but I'll share with you some of the things that are going on. Uh, certainly my friends over at Expertmatic, uh, that's this, uh, the folks that make this, the filters that I have in these tanks back here, they've sent me air pumps and filters, and I thank Expertmatic uh, for their help on that. And uh, Elite, Elite Cichlids, you know, Elite Cichlids stepped up and, and they're, uh, they're, uh, they're sending out like plants and, uh, and they're, you know, these are Elite Cichlid plants in the tanks behind me. If you can make them out like this, this setup here with the, drift, with the driftwood behind me here, that's all an Elite Cichlids uh, creation. And uh, the plants in the uh, African Cichlid tank behind me go this way. And uh, right here, these are all elite from Elite Cichlids. If you go to Elite Cichlids for your artificial plants, be sure to tell them you want the Ben discount. They'll give you a discount. Um, I think it, it might be um, maybe 10%. But if you have fish that, that, can't, that can't live with real plants because they destroy them, and that includes uh, most of the fish I plan on keeping. I have some real plants right now in the um, in this in this tank here, I'll move aside and you can see them. These these plants right right here, those are those are real. Those are real plants, and uh, Anubias, Anubias that you can glue on uh, using super glue gel. Now that's real important. Don't use regular super glue. Don't use Gorilla Glue. Some of these things will release toxins into your tanks. Use, uh, use super glue gel and uh, it's, it's safe. After just a few hours of curing, after you've glued the, the I think it's called re Rezone, Renzone, the Rezone, the thick root of the Anubias, you can just glue that. You can also glue, very lightly glue some of the roots of a Java fern. So there's different kinds of plants. You can glue them uh, right to your decor, whether it's driftwood or anything really. And uh, I also want to thank my friends over at Underwater Galleries. Underwater Galleries, uh, that's this group here, and I'll enlarge it, you can see it a little bit better. Underwater Galleries, they make a very high quality ceramic uh, stone. And uh, I've got some samples of them here, and they're sending me out some of these stones, and I'm gonna be using them and gluing some plants to them and using them in the, uh, in the tank that is gonna be available on the 9th. It looks like around the 9th of February, I'm gonna have this custom-made tank. It's a rimless tank being made by um, glass cages here in Tennessee, and uh, I'm, I'm excited about that. That's gonna be the first week of uh, the first week of, of uh, probably, well, by the second week of February, I'll have it in the garage and I'll start decorating it. I, I would like to uh, uh, run it with some real plants for a little while and glue the plants to these kinds of caves. These are stackable caves. See the big indention in the bottom? So you can, you can stack, you can stack these caves. And here's a, here's a box of them. They come in boxes of various sizes. They're very light. And uh, so you don't have to worry about dropping a real heavy stone into the tank and possibly cracking the glass or doing something like that. But they just sent me these. I haven't even opened this box. But uh, now they're having a contest right now. The folks at Underwater Galleries are having a contest 
If you go to their web page or if you go to the Facebook group page and you search, you'll see a contest that they're having where you can get some discounts and win some prizes and possibly win some of these. But you see these ceramic stones? Really good quality, very light. They are ceramic. You can hear that? If you drop them, they will, they'll shatter. They're like glass. So you got to watch, watch out for that. And, you know, they're stackable. So if you, have, if you have Mabuna or any fish that like to get into a cave, you know, there's some South American, right? Some Central, some New World cichlids that like to get into a cave situation uh, for breeding purposes. I think this looks a lot better than a flower pot. I'm not knocking you if you use flower pots, but it's one of, it, I, I think it looks a lot better. And as the stones, as they start to age, they start to take on the colors, you know, the, the, the greens and the browns. Sorry about that styrofoam noise. It's like fingernails on a chalkboard. But uh, you can see here a couple more. They have them in very, very small, very small caves like this one. And larger caves like this one. So, you know, little guys can hide in these and, uh, you know, your, your, uh, your bigger fish can use these to breed in. And, uh, and again, because of the indentions on the bottom, you can stack them, you can stack them up high. And I've talked with folks who have um, smaller tanks, maybe your 55, your 75s, uh, and they have a large number of Mabuna and they're, they're getting into, they're getting into territorial battles. And one of the things that I, an idea that I stole from somebody else a while back was you can, you can then, you can stack these caves and make these sort of condominiums. And, uh, and what'll happen is you'll, uh, you'll, you'll create more real estate for the Mabunas. So it doesn't always have to be along the bottom. Uh, if you've run out of space on the bottom, you can start stacking up and they will actually make a home or claim a territory that's off, off the bottom of the tank. So just an idea you can make a little Mabuna condominium. The, um, so that's what's happening with, with uh, underwater galleries. Uh, big shout out to them for uh, reaching out and agreeing to help out with some of the things that are going on with the fish room. Uh, Ruth and the rest of the group out there at Underwater Galleries. You can find them at underwatergalleries.com. Another thing that's happening that's pretty exciting is somebody named Vinny. If you're not familiar with Vinny's Aquatics, Check out Vinny's, Vinny's Aquatics. Vinny's Aquatics. Uh, and what Vinny is doing is he has a, uh, his, his real job, apart from having a YouTube channel, is he has a, a, a company that makes signs. Now, when he first approached me and I thought signs, I thought of maybe some of the signs like this uh, cichlid sign behind me, you know, just little signs. And then he started sending me samples of their work I mean, they do like signs for Tiffany's and, uh, you know, Ross and, and uh, you know, Dick Sporting. I mean, they do, this is a major sign company. And uh, they use all types of materials, plastics and woods and, and neon and, and backlighting and what have you. And um, he reached out to me and he said, look, uh, I'd like to make a sign for you, for your channel. And just just to give something back for, you know, what you've done, blah, blah, blah. And uh, just very sweet, very nice of him. And so we're having a sign made. And the initial, the initial design, and you can tell me what you think about this. We're thinking about taking the channel logo, the channel logo of, that you see in the bottom corner. Not the coffees, and not, not the cichlid that's holding a cup of coffee, but the other one that is flashing on the corner. Taking that uh, logo and putting white on the outside with black letters and have that be lit from the inside. So it has the, uh, you know, Ben O'Sickle, you know, Ben O'Sickle at the top. And, and, uh, and then um, in the middle, instead of having a picture of a Taiwan reef, instead have, uh, have just a neon, maybe a deep blue, maybe a purpley blue neon, outline of a fish in the middle of the logo and it would it would hang like over my shoulder here 
It depends how big it is. This could be two, three feet. So we're going to figure out where to hang it so it's behind me uh, during some of the live streams, some of the videos that I do. So um, Vinny is working on some designs and uh, coming up with some uh, rough drawings. I'm excited. It, it's gonna, I think it's going to look beautiful. And uh, I'm not sure where I'm going to put it yet, but very nice. Thank you, Vinny, for that. Check out Vinny's Aquatics on YouTube. Vinny's Aquatics. And um, good guy, very down to earth. There's nothing, there's no pretension, there's no, uh, there's no, uh, uh, I don't know how to, there's no slick salesman, sham, wow, uh, you know, that kind of uh, YouTuber, you know, that, that's just sort of like, hey, how's it going, blah, 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 none of that, it's just him talking about fish in a very down-to-earth manner, which I like. So, Vinny, uh, thank you for offering uh, to do that. Very exciting addition to the uh, to the fish room, and very much very much anticipated. Now the biggest the biggest announcement probably of all of them, and that is that uh, that my friend James Largo, over at the Cichlid Shack, has. Uh, we just move his sign up here a little bit. James Largo has offered to be a um, like a, a, a friend or benefactor to the channel and um, you, you know there's probably three fish providers in the country maybe four that I would consider getting into any kind of arrange, arrangement with I hadn't approached any of them uh, just because I hadn't and, and James reached out to me and said, look, um, uh, I want to get into a way of promoting and how about if I provide you with some stuff? And so James is going to be sending me out some fish, possibly some equipment, um, uh, counting on him to, to help uh, fill up right here the, uh, the cichlid tank. This is the cichlid tank over my shoulder here. And... Uh, it, it's uh, sorely lacking African cichlids. And so James is going to be uh, uh, sending me out a, you know, some fish that I'd already had my eye on, the OB Skittles, the Phoenix. But also he's probably going to end up uh, providing me with the, uh, the Peacock Flavescent, the uh, Blue Neon, the, the, uh, the Bicolor 500, the Sunshine Benga, the kinds of fish that, that I just love. And he's going to be helping me in the putting together of a monster African cichlid tank. Uh, and when I say monster, I don't mean a thousand gallons. I'm talking maybe 220, maybe somewhere in that neighborhood, which for me would be kind of monstrous in the space that I have. So putting together a very large tank that we can dedicate to some of the predators. Uh, you know... You know from my history that uh, that I love the bigger uh, the the bigger predator African cichlids. I'm talking about your your uh, your sand divers, your hawks, your trouts, your uh, venusus, your living stone eye, your your linnies, uh, you know fish like that. So we'll have we'll have a big tank dedicated to to the bigger the bigger uh, Malawi uh, predators. And, and that will be a joint venture that will be taking place with, with James, with James Largo. And I'm just, uh, just beside myself uh, ex excited about, about, uh, about that, that particular venture. And then have a, a keep this tank behind me, uh, the tank that's behind me here, keep it for the more of the medium, you know, your plastidochromis like you see on the screen there. Uh, maybe have an autopharynx tetrastigma. Have some of the Jalo reefs, like we were just talking about earlier. Uh, you know, have some of the more medium size, the Z Rock. You know, fish like that. Have the, the peacocks and, and fish like that in, in this tank behind me, and then have that bigger tank where I can grow out the monsters who get up about, you know, the nine to 15 inch in captivity uh, fish 
uh, have those in the bigger tank. So uh, it's exciting. Now, in the meantime, let me get back here to this screen. In the meantime, if you want to pick up, if you want to pick up some items uh, from the shack, use the code uh, shack. Use the code shack attack. Shack attack, shack attack ten, all lowercase. Shack attack ten. So if you go to the shack and use that code when you check out, it is active. It is a valid code. It's working now. You'll get 10% off on any fish that you get from the shack. Shack attack 10. So um, a big shout out to, uh, to James and to all the folks that have stepped up and are helping me, helping me in the setting up of this uh, fish room and providing me with, with uh, goods and services. And you know, it's a win-win. I mean, I use, I use their products and, and uh, you folks become aware of them. Some of you go to the Amazon store. Uh, some of you go directly to the retailer, you, you buy them. So they win and I win and, and it ends up being a, a, a real cool, uh, cool, ed, you know, a real cool uh, arrangement. So, uh, and also, also, Part of this is going to be and going to include the giving away of things like cichlid stones, elite cichlid plants, and other items. Uh, I have an arrangement with the Aquarium Co-op. Aquarium Co-op will send me things. And those items, I'll talk about, about them, I'll use them, and in some cases what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them to you you're going to have an opportunity to actually have these items shipped to you. So, um, and you know me, I love giving away stuff. I love, uh, you know, I love taking care of you, the folks that support the channel. You, get, you guys and gals are the best. You've stuck with me through this, what I call the fishless cycle. <laughs> my, my fishless cycle. You've stuck through it with me. I thank you for that. And, uh, so that's, that's the update. I want to have these tanks behind me. I want to have the 90-gallon custom on this side. I want to have a rack with some 29-gallon tanks on this side, uh, probably further down, and then have the 220 right, right on my right, have a big 220, and then have a rack with the 29-gallon tanks, and maybe have another, another 200 on this side so I can put the bigger the bigger South Americans, you know, when, when those, when those viejas, uh, or maybe when the, um, when the Jack Dempsey's or, uh, you know, fish like that get larger, I'm going to have to have a bigger South American tank. So, uh, have, have that on this side too. And then some weeks when I, when I film or when I do live streams, I can have these different backgrounds. I can have the, the 90, the 220, the, the rack, I can have this behind me. So different backgrounds. So it kind of keeps it different, a little fresh, a little different with each, each broadcast or each, uh, each live stream or each uh, video that's recorded. So um, let's take a look here at what you folks are talking about. And uh, I'm going to move this chat around. And... Uh, scroll up and down the chat and see if something jumps out at me. Looks like we have 134 people on. Is that right? 122? Let's take a look at some of your questions. If I missed a super chat while I was rambling on and on, I'm sorry. I wasn't looking at the chat. And let's see, it doesn't look like I missed any super chats. Okay, if you have any questions about the fish room, about what's going on, or about any situation going on with your fish or tanks, go ahead and ask them now. And uh, I will go ahead and take them up. Let's see here. Thank you, Candy, for asking everybody to hit the like button. I appreciate that.
Tony, I'm sorry about that. Uh, Expertmatic, can't get Expertmatic in the UK. Tony, as a reminder, can you send me an email about that? I will contact the distributors because I believe that they're out of China and it would, it would uh, seem to me that it'd be just as easy to get them to the States as it would be to the UK. I don't know if they have any import regulations or something, but uh, send me an email reminder to ben.o.cichlid at gmail and uh, let me look into that for you about getting those expert Maddox over to the UK. Um, Joho, Joho N. If you if you don't see your fish acting in a weird way, or um, you know, I mean, if they were if they were poisoned or something toxic went in the water, you'd probably see something uh, happen right away. And uh, this is a question from uh, from Joho N. Hey, I used normal super glue and now worried when, when you said that. So if you're not noticing something, I mean, by now, you probably would have seen something. So um, I wouldn't worry about it too much. If you do start to see, see something, do a large water change and pull the items out that you, soup, that you used regular, regular glue on. Let's see here. S. Sharista, S. Sharista, is Cichlid Shack a good online retailer? Uh, they're they're in the um, they're in my top what I call my legit list. I have uh, you know like a little legit list I talk about sometimes. Uh, Life Fish Direct, uh, Wonder of Cichlids. Cunningham cichlids, right? And uh, Cichlid Shack, uh, those would be examples of folks that are on the legit list. And certainly as a, as a sort of a co-sponsor, benefactor of the channel, you know I'm going to push Cichlid Shack. In all fairness, there are a lot of good ethical uh, providers out there. And uh, what I look at is, is, is how fast do they get back to you if you have a question? And what is their uh, dead on arrival policy? Do they stand behind their fish if, if there's a problem? And, um, you know, just what, what's their commitment to it? Uh, people like Josh, uh, Trevor O'Shea at The Wonder, uh, Josh at Cunningham Cichlids, and certainly James. Uh, th these, 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 these guys are all in. They're all in. It's all they do. That's their life. They don't have a, a job that they come home from at five o'clock and go check on the fish. Meanwhile, there's been, you know, seven hours of aggression going on. That's not what's going on. They live in that fish room. They live in their, in, that's their life. That's what they do. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Paul, my first uh, live stream. Paul, welcome. I'm glad you made it. Let's see what else we have going on. I'm trying a new feature that uh, YouTube just added where I can take your comment and I can pin it to the top of the chat while I'm, while I'm answering your question. T-bone, T-bone fishies. T-bone fishy says I'm having trouble keeping my plants alive uh, so anyone have any suggestions? Uh, let me show you, this is, uh, sorry about that chair. Let me show you something. This is what I've been using. This is Aquarium Co-op's Easy Green. And, uh, You put uh, one pump for every 10 gallons, once or twice a week. Very, very easy. You just give it a little shake and just pump it into the tank and it provides uh, the valuable nutrients. Now you may have some other factors going on. Are you providing enough light? Uh, are they low light plants like Anubias? 
uh, that don't need a lot of light, that they can do okay in shade? Or are they plants that require a lot of light? Is your light full spectrum? Or perhaps you have a light that isn't full spectrum, and so you're denying the plants some of the light spectrum that they need. Uh, so, or do you, do you have fish that are, that are eating, you know, digging them up, eating the roots, pecking on the plants? Uh, so there's, there's various factors involved. Uh, do you have enough nitrates? I mean, what if your nitrates are, are super low, like let's say near zero, your plants are not going to do that well. They actually need nit some nitrates to consume. Now, this has a little bit of uh, nitrogen, has a little bit of nitrogen in it, and a little bit of phosphate and potassium, magnesium, iron, manganese. So this is, this is good stuff. So uh, that's some of the things that could be going on with your plants. Just things, to keep, just things to keep in mind. There are other people here on the chat, I'm sure, that are more expert than I could ever be in keeping plants. And certainly um, there are some plant experts out there like, uh, well, like Corey. I mean, you could probably write an email or uh, get onto a chat uh, during one of Corey's live streams from the co-op and ask questions about plants. And he is uh, an expert in many, many fields. I mean, he's actually done formal education in a lot of these, uh, a lot of these areas. So that would be a resource that you could tap into. Let's see here. Chevy fish, great apisto caves. So you're probably talking about, about these guys, the uh, underwater, underwater gallery caves. And they come, in, they come in a variety of sizes, and I heard that they're coming out with some real big ones. Real, real big ones. So that's going to be kind of cool. So yeah, these would be good caves for any kind of fish that likes to have a, a, a cave territory. I'm also going to be adding probably some um, pleco caves. I saw, for those of you who watched um, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, yesterday's video, I think it, uh, the, the thumbnail says got them. Uh, I went out and got some geos that are in this tank, uh, some additional geo, uh, surinamensis, ge uh, geophagus surinamensis, and uh, red, red striped earth eaters. And uh, they had some plecos, black, black plecos with perfect bright white dots on them. Man, I was so close to pulling the trigger, but I... But I was a little bit in a hurry, and I wanted to find out more about, more about that pleco. How big does it get? Would it be okay in these water parameters? But I'll probably get some pleco caves and put them in there, and so they'll have a, a place to hang out. If I don't get those, um, I like the gold nuggets, and I also love the uh, bristle and bushy nose plecos. Uh, those are great. And uh, I like them because they don't get so big, so huge, that you have to give them away after a year. And... Um, and cichlids ignore them. They, they don't seem to be interested in uh, bristlenose. Now, would that be the case with that white spotted or a gold nugget? I don't know. I don't know. And a, something like a gold nugget, I would probably need to have in the uh, South American tank because I think they, they may want to eat wood. Like they'll want to eat, munch on some wood from time to time. So I got to have a little wood in there. And I don't like keeping wood in my African cichlid tanks because wood sometimes I've heard can uh, reduce the uh, pH, and so I don't want that. So let's see here. Did I miss a super chat? Hey, T-Bone. Thank you, T-Bone, for that. I appreciate it. Thank you for that super chat. All right, let's see here. Any other questions you want to throw at me? I'm scrolling through the chat. As fast as I can. Let's see here. Texas Fish Room. Texas Fish Room thinks... He thinks that Vinny is a good guy. And he's got a 10-gallon Aquascape Challenge. Now, on that Aquascape Challenge, I think he's offering some prizes. So... Uh, 
uh, get involved in that aquascape challenge, folks, over at uh, Vinny's Aquatics. And uh, I think I even threw in a coffee mug. So it was one of the prizes. I don't know, he's going to have a certain number of prizes. And one of them is one of my channel coffee mugs where somebody can go and pick the mug that they want because they have different mugs with different fish on them. And uh, so I, you know, he approached me. I said, yeah, I'll jump in. I'll jump in uh, for, a, for a mug. So, uh, yeah, Vinny, Vinny's a, a good guy. I, I like the fact that he's very, he's very real. There's nothing uh, slick about him. He just is who he is. All right, let's see here. Uh, Grumpy Gramps. Grumpy Gramps wants to know, is there a way to send a pic or video of my cichlid tank and get your opinion and or tips on it? Uh, sure, sure. I can't guarantee how fast I'll get back to you because I do have a lot of stuff coming in. But uh, send it to the ben.o.cichlid at gmail and attach your pictures or videos and I'll be happy to uh, give you my opinion of your setup. Please include information about the, um, the size of the fish, total number of fish, and the type of filtration that you have. Things that I can't see in the video. And that way I'll give you some comments on, uh, on the entire setup, on what I think of the entire setup. I'll be happy to do that. Again, not sure how fast I can, but I will. Do we have anybody on the on the uh, stream right now that knows about phantom plecos? Phantom plecos. Ivan Ojeda, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I hope the J sounds like an H. Uh, Ojeda. Hi, Ben and Fish Friends was recently given a green phantom. Green phantom plecos are beautiful. They're a beautiful shade of green. And... Um, Check to see if they need a little wood. Some of these plecos need some wood to munch on. Good for their digestion. And uh, otherwise, you know, you're looking at algae wafers. Uh, they will eat protein that you put in the tank. I'm assuming if they're like most plecos, they'll, um, you know, they'll go after the anything that goes to the bottom. And what I would do is I would feed, because cichlids are such aggressive eaters, very seldom anything would make it to the bottom. So there would be a, uh, a little bit of a busy area, like a lot of plants or rocks in one part of the tank, like, in the, like right around where these plants are right here. So the pleco would get in there. Right? The bushy nose that I had before would get in, in, into an arrangement like that. And then I would feed the fish on the far end of the tank and then drop food a little bit hard. I drop the pellets hard so they go right to the bottom and the pleco would have a chance at them. The pleco would go ahead and, and get on them and eat them. Otherwise, the plecos don't, don't get a chance to eat. And their stomachs start to cave in. They start to look a bit emaciated. Because they can't get to the food. Because the other fish are just too aggressive. Um, I had to, do, had to do that at first with my clown loaches. Because they, they, they were not big enough in the beginning. So I would feed all the fish on one side. Then I'd run to the other side. And I'd drop some some flakes or some or some pellets and the loaches would be able to eat after a while they became aggressive eaters and would go right off the top so it it, it stopped being a problem i could feed them anywhere but getting food to them that's an issue are they going to pick on, on that kind of a of a uh, pleco i don't know uh, my bushy nose and my normal green plecos never got picked never really got picked on by uh, by cichlids but i have seen stories and on cichlid uh, chats or forums i've heard stories of people coming out one morning and their pleco was eaten up i mean stomach's gone eyes are gone the fish just ravaged them over the night overnight so i imagine there's exceptions to every rule right the um so if you know about phantoms go ahead and uh comment
So let's take a look here. It looks like Steve Weber. Steve Weber wants to know if it's uh, advantageous to clean the foam of my power heads right in my 250 gallon tank. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, power heads have to be taken apart at least every few months. You know, you, you, you take them apart, pull, pull the impeller out, and give them a good cleanup because they lose their gallons per hour. And um, uh, I've talked about this before. This was at, I think, at BRS, Bulk, Bulk Reef Supply, BRS suppliers. They do a lot of commercials on YouTube. But uh, they, had a, a, they had a way of measuring flow, and the powerheads were dropping in gallons per hour very, very quickly after being put into use. And the main, <clears throat> main reason was a buildup of gunk. So you got to pull those power heads out and, and uh, disassemble and give them a good cleaning, put them back together. So, yeah, it, it is advantageous. Don't have to do it all the time. You have to worry about it. And it also depends on how you're running them. I mean, if you're running your power heads 24-7, like I did in a couple of my tanks before, uh, yeah, you're going to need every every month or two, you, you should pull them apart. If you're running them, let's say, four or five hours a day just to move some of the, tr the detritus towards the, in towards the intake of the filter, uh, just to create a little circulation, you might... You could probably go maybe twice a year and, and take them apart. So, you know, again, like I usually say, it's a fluid, it's a fluid situation, Steve. So, <laughs> pun intended. So, um, wow. It looks like uh, Grumpy Gramps moved fish from an old tank to a new one about a week ago, put all my fish in a tote, and then he found 30 fry. Now, th th that's, that's amazing. I mean, because one of the things you hear from a lot of breeders is that you have to have, you know, these absolute perfect and pristine uh, tank conditions in order to to facilitate right to promote breeding and you you threw all these guys in a tote and you got 30 fry out of it. <laughs> well so much for that there but you know the other thing that i hear about breeding is that if you do a shock and i don't mean a shock that kills your fish but some type of a shift like a, a big water change or uh, some people put cold water in, in a tank and uh, don't do any of this without research on the kind of fish that you have. But some kind of a shift, and it triggers these breeding uh, behaviors. How many of you have done a water change and then seen fish start to pair up? I used to see it with a, um, a Venusis, a male Venusis, and a male Fusco. They used to, I used to do a water change, and they would pair up and start doing this little dance around each other, and, and uh, you know, digging a pit and, and the whole thing, and it was two male fish. So something gets triggered pretty hard when you do these shifts. And uh, even with delicate discus, I've heard that uh, sometimes pouring a little bit of water in that, that emulates a, a change in the seasons, like, like it, it would be where they come from natively, that that actually can trigger the... Uh, the breeding behavior. But wow, throw them in a tote and you got 30 extra fish. That's kind of cool. You're going to keep them in the tote? <laughs> Raise them up in the tote? All right. Candy says, 136 watching, only 53 likes. Please hit that like button. Thank you, Candy. Appreciate that. Uh, top MFN here, talking about how plants can actually be a source of pollution 
in a tank if you don't clean around the roots. I don't, that, that, that's interesting. I haven't heard that before. I mean, you would think that the, the plant would be part of the system that's helping to keep the tank clean by absorbing nutrients. So I wouldn't think that cleaning around the roots, uh, and I don't know what you mean by cleaning. I mean, do you mean pulling them up and really getting in there or just maybe doing a light vacuum around the base of the plant or having plants that are so thick you can't get in there to clean and so you have a buildup over time and that ends up creating uh, pollution and possibly a jump in nitrates maybe that's maybe that's the case I, I you know not something that I'm going to try and comment on but it, it, it sort of makes sense which 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 makes me think that you know you really want to have a cleanup crew when you have a planted tank whether it's snails uh, quarries something that is going to be small enough and, and is going to work its way in there and really kind of clean up in, in those plants, places where the fish normally would not, you know, would not work their way into. So, uh, you know, some small corridor, corridors, uh, some snails, things of that nature would, would do the trick for that, I'd imagine, instead of having to necessarily dig things up. So... Um, Uh, Grumpy Gramps, you're welcome. I read your comment about watching my videos. Thank you so much. You are welcome for that. And I'm really glad that you have, are getting something out of those videos. Mark uh, W. has a good question. Are the giveaways open to Canadians? And um, I've, had, I've had a problem, Mark, with shipping. I once had a, uh, a small sponge filter that somebody won in Canada. The sponge filter was probably 10 bucks. It cost me $30 to ship it. And then it came back as undeliverable. So, um, so I would say no, I would say probably outside of the continental United States, probably not for shipping. Certainly if we're giving away gift cards, sometimes when I do contests, some vendors will step up and say, okay, I'm going to throw in a $50 gift card. So if that's the case, I guess you could use that from all over, the, anywhere in the world, and then you would cover the shipping. So um, short answer is um, uh, no, only because of what, what's happened in the past, but I mean, things can change. Shipping right now in general is kind of a pain in the rear. I don't know if it's because of the, uh, the COVID or whatever, but everything's taking longer and, and Anyway, shipping's a bit of a pain right now. And I don't know if you've shipped anything recently, but the price of shipping has gotten, it, it's just nuts. Um, my son was late for a flight. I had to ship, ship him his briefcase or his uh, suitcase. Normal size suitcase, roll on. Cost me $150 to ship him his suitcase. And that was Nashville to Philadelphia. Or Nashville to Washington, actually. <clears throat> Andrea's fish room. Your fish room setup is going to be wonderful. Looking forward to seeing the end results. Would your wife be interested in a nano tank of her own one day? Um, Andrea, I, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've, I've asked if she wanted a tank in the background because she's a professional tutor. She tutors uh, like over Zoom. Uh, she's uh, actually very well known in the tutoring world for the kind of results that she gets with uh, difficult students uh, from anywhere from kindergarten to high school. So I've asked her if she wants a, uh, a tank, a little tank that people could see behind her. But she has a space, a little bit of a space issue. She does want a, a, a discus tank. She loves discus. So... At some point, if the discus tank doesn't end up in, in the fish room in the garage, it'll end up in the house. And uh, she just loves the, uh, the, the peacefulness of a discus tank. Uh, she used to complain about how my big African cichlids in the bedroom were always fighting, waking her up in the middle of the night because they were splashing. <laughs> Why don't you get a peaceful discus tank? <laughs> All right.
right, I get it. So that'll probably be, uh, that'll be the situation probably. All right, let's see here. This is a GGG Gianni one. What do you think of crushed coral for a community tank? I, I, I love crushed coral, uh, but keep in mind that coral is going to be releasing a lot of minerals. Uh, it's gonna be hardening your water. So if your community tank, uh, if, you, if you need hard water, if you need a high pH, uh, yes, crushed coral is awesome. I used it for years. You can see it in all my older videos, the white, off-white crushed coral, you know, shells and coral. I think it's beautiful. I even liked it with the African cichlids and when I had Mabuna, they would carry pieces of the coral around and, and you know, chunks of the coral, building little nests and stuff. So um, I like crushed coral, the, uh, but just make sure that your community tank uh, is one that can tolerate uh, a very hard uh, mineralized, you know, a lot of calcium, magnesium in the water. And uh, if not, then no, don't use crushed coral. But as a substrate in general, I would say crushed coral is great. The carob sea, carob sea that is available at my Amazon store that I used in the uh, African cichlid tank behind me, it came with, with uh, beneficial bacteria and it cycled, that tank cycled faster. Uh, even with the Fritzyme 7, it cycled faster than this tank with, and, and with Fritzyme 7. So um, it got that extra boost. So if you do go with, with an aragonite or a crushed coral, consider getting something that comes, um, it's a bio, has bio in the name, and, it, and don't wash it because you'll wash the beneficial bacteria out of it. Just dump it in the tank, put down a plate, and fill your tank with the water hitting the plate so it doesn't disturb the, the substrate and you'll have clear water. You, you, you won't have that, that fogginess that you get when you, when you fill a tank and the water is disrupting the substrate. <clears throat> so that's what I think of crushed coral. Well, uh, this is a good question and um, this is, this is from Naomi H2O. What's the best way to kickstart a new tank if you already have a smaller tank running? Uh, the, best way, the best way, of course, is to take some of the material, just a small amount of the material that you have in the filter of the tank that's already running and is healthy. And um, this is what I would suggest. Okay, Everybody probably does it differently, but I take... I fill the tank halfway with water from an established tank. That water doesn't really have a significant amount of beneficial bacteria in it. And if you took water from an established tank and used it to start a new tank, and that was all you did, there's a chance your fish are not gonna survive because there isn't enough beneficial bacteria in the water column. There's a little bit, but not enough to really sustain a situation. So take, I go half water from an established tank then half conditioned water, water that I've put prime or safe or Fritz complete in it. Then drop in, drop in some, uh, a piece of filter media from an established tank and maybe throw a little bit of uh, Fritz Zyme 7 or Seachem Stability, drop some of that in there and I, I would feel comfortable adding fish to that immediately. In other words, have the fish waiting in a bag and, as, and if the temperature is right and I followed those steps, I could put the fish right in and they would be fine. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna get one of the 29 gallon tanks up and running because somebody has offered, uh, offered a green tear to me that's beautiful, but he's too big for this tank. He probably would, would eat that little electric blue Jack Dempsey. So I'm gonna put him in a 29 gallon with a little bit of the Carib Sea Naturals substrate, half water from this tank, half treated tap water, and I'm gonna drop in one of the um, Marineland 400 cartridges, the uh, carbon, the carbon uh, foam cartridges that's been running in it. I'm gonna put one of them, maybe two, I'll just put them inside that tank. 
So I'll have, and maybe a little Fritz Zyme 7. That tank will be, I can just go over, pick up that fish, bring it, and put it right into the 29 the same morning. And I'm, and I'm confident that that fish will survive and do well until I get the bigger tank set up that I can put him in. But he's about, I think he's about four or five inches, which doesn't seem like a lot, but you put a four or five inch fish next to a, a two inch fish, both in length and, and girth, you know, the, the, the width of that fish, it's very intimidating. And I think he probably would eat my little, uh, my little electric blue jack Dempsey. And I don't want that to happen. So um, I hope that answered your question, Naomi. Let me scroll down a little more. Soup Bone, how do you like living in Nashville? I love it, Soup Bone. It is, um, you know, it, I just got to watch what I say because I still, in a lot of ways, I still, um, I still love California. So when I say things, I don't want it to come across as a, as a knock on California. I was born there. I lived you know, 65 years there. Um, so I love California, but it's friendlier. The air is cleaner. The cost of living is 30 to 50% less. I can register my car for 60 bucks, 45 bucks, instead of 270 bucks. My water bill is 100 instead of 500. Uh, I... <laughs> I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. So um, I had a little snow the other day. Do I mind snow? I love snow. I love snow the way I get it here, a little bit, and then it's gone. Uh, does it get cold? Yeah. This morning was in the 30s. I don't mind. The fresh air and the cold air, I love it. So anyway, I'm loving it, Soup Bone. Do I miss the beach? Uh, yeah, in all honesty, how often would I go to the beach? Not as often as, as I probably should have, but I, uh, I do miss the beach. Hey, Francie. Good to see you here, Francie. And she says, my, my Tetra Stigma doesn't seem to be growing much. Are they slow growers? I have a bit of an uptick in aggression. Well, there is, some of the answer might be in your question. Uh, certainly, if there's aggression directed at the tetrastigma, you might have a fish that is under stress and that stress might be impacting growth. Uh, some fish within the same species will, uh, you know, you can get runts and you can get giants. I mean, you get some fish that I mean, I had a, um, a Taiwan reef that was just a beast. I mean, it was a giant of a Taiwan reef. I've had other Taiwan reefs that maxed out at maybe an inch and a half smaller than, uh, or even up to two inches smaller than that, than that giant Taiwan reef. So within the same line, you can get um, runts, just like you can get runts in a, in a litter, you know, litter of dogs or cats, you can get little runts, you can get ones that become huge. So there's a genetic roll of the dice, and then of course you have all the stuff that you know about, right? Stress, water parameters, you know, right? Is it, is it optimum? Is the pH where it should be? Is the hardness where it should be, right? Your GH, KH, are, are these parameters dialed in and, and to facilitate maximum growth? If they're not, you could have a fish that gets a little bit stunted, add an equation to that. Also, you have diet. Are you providing the, the nutrients that that fish needs. Now for me, uh, and you know this, I, I provide uh, a variety. I always mix. I'll give them a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of, of Piscine Energetics, a little bit of Northfin, a little bit of, uh, you know, even some Tetra Flakes, some Cichlid Flakes. I'll give them some, you know, some uh, Omega-1 Cichlid Cubes. I'll give them, you know, Frozen Cubes. So I do a whole variety of, of things because I've always thought that no one, no one food producer has cornered the market and nailed every possible contingency. 
So I'll throw in some Zoomed spirulina. I'll throw in some algae wafers. So I just mix it up. And that way I know the fish are getting a spectrum and, and fulfilling their, their nutritional needs to maximize growth and, and color, right? I hope I answered your question, Francie. I probably rambled on too much. <laughs> All right. Looks like somebody hit me up with a super chat. Let me see here. Who was that? Hey, T-Bones, thank you for that. Every little bit helps. And Bonnie Eden. Bonnie Eden. Bonnie Eden did a super chat. And let's see here. Hi, Ben. Good to see your tanks. My dwarf Gurami seems to be hiding. I hear two males don't get along. Should I remove the, you probably mean second one there. Uh, you could, it'd be worth a shot. It'd be worth trying it if it's unbearable. If it's just an occasional chase. But if you start to see damage, and by damage what I mean, there's some scales missing on the side where the fish took a broadside hit. There's some fin nipping, some tearing up of the fins. Um, maybe the lips are a little bit scarred because of lip locking. You see some of that, yes, take action immediately because you have a fish under tremendous stress and those wounds could possibly turn into infections. And those infections could possibly spread. So you gotta take some fast action. So yeah, yeah, maybe. Maybe you need to pull one of them out, get a hospital tank set up, just like I talked about a second ago, create a second small tank and, uh, and throw one of them in there. Let's see here that I see. And it looks like REPSEJ74, 40 DKKs. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate that. Not sure what a DKK is, but thank you. <laughs> And let's see, Lee. Hi from South Africa. I have a problem with yellow labs hiding between rocks and not swimming in the open water. If I remove the rocks, they hold between the HOB filter. Well, you know, you, you've got a you've got a fish, Lee. You've got a fish there that that likes to that's how they like to be. They 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 like to be, you know, they're cave dwellers, right? And I think Mabuna is like a it's a name, it's an African name for rocks, right? Rock, rock dweller or something to do with rocks is what the word mabuna means. So um, that's, that's how they roll that, that fish. So um, I wouldn't suggest to, to take away the caves. Maybe you can create some caves that are more opened up. And again, I mean, you look at these, these caves, these kind of situations, I mean, you might you know, lay down a few things like this and um, you might be able to still enjoy them. You know, they'll, they'll stick their, their snouts out to see what's going on. Uh, they're not going to be able to hide entirely. You'll be able to look inside the caves. Uh, so some, maybe something like that from underwater galleries. So, um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't remove the caves altogether because they'll become miserable because that, that's how they like to be. They're not open water fish. Also, take a look and see if there's a fish that's, when you feed them, is there one fish that when you feed them is, is attacking the other fish and, and trying to create an open area so no one else can get to the food. If you have that going on, that means that you have a sort of alpha, you know, apex, <laughs> apex mabuna predator that, that, is, uh, that is harassing and keeping those other fish on high alert. So maybe what you need to do is, is rehome that fish and, uh, and hope that the next one that moves up the line doesn't harass and keep all the other fish hiding. And I hope that answered your question and I hope that helps. Let's see. You know, um, You know, you, you, like I said last week, 
you're, you're, uh, you, start these, you start these streams and I come up with a topic Thursday night or Friday morning. I go, okay, what, what am I going to talk about? And then I, I start to go into the stream and there's a little bit of a, you know, that little bit of anxiety of what if I, what if we, if I, there's nothing left to talk about. What if there's no more, uh, you know, we run out of topics and, uh, and then we get rolling and you folks participate so well in these streams. Your questions are so awesome and uh, it, it, gets it, it gets it going and then I look up and it's been an hour. So um, I thank you for that. <laughs> it really, uh, I mean, it really does fly. It, the time does really, really fly and I, I really love your level of participation in these, in these uh in these live streams. And, uh, but that being said, I want you folks to, uh, to consider hitting that, that uh, bell. I still have about 28% subscribed viewers. The rest of you are unsubscribed. Hit the bell, hit the notification, hit the uh, like button. Come visit on Ben O. Cichlid at Facebook, Ben O. Apostrophe Cichlid. Be sure to agree to the group rules or you don't get let in. We probably turned down a hundred requests a month because they didn't answer the questions. So if you want to get into the Facebook group, please answer the questions, especially the one about the group rules. Follow on, on Instagram at ben.o.cichlid and for some behind the scenes peeks. I thank my moderators. You are the best. I thank the, the, uh, the friends of the channel, your expert Matic, your, uh, your galleries, your, your Underwater Galleries, also uh, Elite Cichlids, and of course, James Largo at the uh, Cichlid Shack. Use Shack Attack 10, all lowercase, for a 10% discount. If you go to the Teespring store and you want to buy mugs and stuff like that, use Livestream for a 10% discount. And if you buy from Elite Cichlids, tell them you want the same price that Ben Ochart gets. <laughs> all right. Thank you, my friends. You are very appreciated. I will see you next week and uh, watch for a video tomorrow on how to vacuum a light sand substrate. Because if you do it wrong, you're going to have a bucket full of sand. Ask me how I know. <laughs> All right, my friends. That's it for now. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.